Who should be training the best people? The best agent. Do you want your best person trained by the guy making 100000 a year or no money per year? Now, does it mean that some part-time people that are up and coming shouldn't be involved in training? No, of course they should be. But it means that you as the six-figure earner or 50K earner or soon-to-be six-figure, Trey's about to cross 100000 should have his hand in all the meetings. Right? It means that if, 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 if Chris has a couple new people that are starting to be independent, he's got to have his hand in. He's got to be hopping on the call. He's got to be helping close. He's got to help build the plans. I haven't had any of my best people ever get trained by anybody other than me. Does that mean I'm doing everything? No. Is my hand in everything? Hell yeah, it is. My hand's in everything. I got my hand in everything. My hands are in everything. Why? Because I want to be a one percenter. So my topic today is this. I want you to write this down. Being a one percenter in the insurance game. How are we doing, John? We good? Awesome. Appreciate you. To be a one percenter in the insurance game. That's what I want to talk to you guys about today. In order to be a one percenter, you got to wrap your head around building an agency. There's no one percenter in the insurance industry that has not built an agency. You can be self-employed, you can make great money, but if you want to be a one percenter, you got to wrap your head around building an agency. There's a mindset to it, and there's six things I want to share with you. The first thing that is really important if you want to be a one percenter is you have to have strong hours of operation. You have to have clearly defined hours of operation. You can't show up to your business when you feel like showing up. You got to show up. You got to be consistent. If you're full time, it makes it a little bit easier. But do you show up on time? Every day, do you show up at the same time? Hours of operation. You know that 90% of people that fail in this industry fail right here. They cannot wrap their head around hours of operation. Now, within hours of operation, write this down. You got to do the feared things first. This is where most people also fail. You got to be willing to do the feared things first. So what are some feared things? What's the most feared things? Oh. Making phone calls. So if you show up to the office at 8 a.m., maybe you do a half hour of admin, walk around, get a coffee. By 9 a.m., you're doing what? Making phone calls. Guess what most people do at 9 a.m.? They're doing administration. They're doing paperwork. They're calling their team. They're walking around the office. They're getting ready for their appointment. And guess when they make calls? Maybe in the afternoon if they have time and if they feel like it. True or true? true. The feared things have to get done first. If you're part-time, it's even harder. There's a lot of part-time agents on this call right now that can only put two, three hours a day. How important is feared things first if you're part-time? It's crucial. You work your nine to five, you go home, you have two hours to do your, to do your business, Guess what people do for two hours? Emails, administration, check their WhatsApp, make an Instagram post, call their, call their one teammate, and they call it a day. And they wonder why they can't make five, $6,000 a month part-time, which is a, a decent part-time income on your way to full-time. Most part-time people should be making five to 6,000 a month part-time. That's a good part-time income, 50 grand part-time. Full-time should be six figures. This is a six-figure business full-time. But in order to do that, in order to do that, you have to be doing the feared things first. If you're not willing to make calls early in the morning, if you're not willing to get all the uncomfortable things done before noon, your chance of being a one percenter is slim to none. And slim left town on a permanent vacation. That's zero percent chance, Trey. Okay, just check it. Okay. All right, number two. You want to be a one percenter? You got to put in the work. You got to put in the work. There has to be a period of time where you are obsessed with doing the work. Now, just showing up, hours of operation is not enough. You got to do the work. And I'm going to give you five things that are considered work in order. Is, let me ask you a question. Is doing paperwork part of the work to be successful? No, no. Now, you have to do it. You have to get it done. But it has nothing to do with you becoming successful. I know that because I don't do paperwork. So doing paperwork has nothing to do with being successful. Nothing to do with it. Do you guys understand that? Yeah. It has nothing to do with being successful. I know that because I haven't touched a piece of paperwork in 17 and a half years. The last time I had access to my WFG email was 15 years ago. 
I have not checked my email for 15 years. I don't check my email. I have staff that do it. They filter it. They bring to me what's important because that's, that's a job they can do. I do everything else that's important. I don't do administration. You'll never see a piece of paper on my desk. You'll never see me doing apps in the middle of the day. I do the feared things first. I do all the challenging stuff first because all the other stuff is avoidance to do the real work. Okay, you, we're talking about being a one percenter here. I didn't say a five percenter. I said a one percenter. So if this doesn't apply and this makes you uncomfortable, that's okay. Right? It should make you a bit uncomfortable because it made me a bit uncomfortable 17 and a half years ago when I became a one percenter. Okay? So let's talk about those things. In order, number one most important thing of working on is prospecting. It's the most important thing. Prospecting. Can you call somebody you haven't prospected? No. So what's considered a prospect? A, a name and a number. Guess what most people consider a prospect? I talked to somebody online today. I added somebody to my list. That's not a prospect. That doesn't count. A prospect is somebody that you've spoken to. I don't care if it's online or in person and you've gotten their phone number with the intention of calling them to book a meeting. That's a prospect. On my CFT chat, there's a lot of CFTs that have prospected 30, 40 people this month, but they haven't done a direct. So do you think they're real prospects? No, they're not real prospects. I can add a name to my list too. I can go down the yellow pages. I can go online and start adding people. Oh, Adam Smith from Instagram. That's not a prospect. That's a name on a piece of paper. A prospect is a name and a number. That's one. Number two is making calls. The hard work is making calls. How many people full time do you think you should speak to minimum every single day on the phone? Trap? Five people minimum. Not five calls, five conversations. How many calls do you need to make to talk to five people? As many as it takes. As many as it takes. Okay, Holbrook, here's my goal. I'm going to make 10 calls today. Well, what if nobody picks up? I don't care how many calls you make. I care how many people you talk to. This is the big misconception of sales. I'm going to call 10 people. Well, you've been, you've been ca calling 10 people for six months and you aren't at six figures yet. So does that really work? No, you got to talk to five people a day. You might have to call 40 people. You might have to call five people. You might call three people and get two referrals, call those two and everybody picks up. You've made your five, you've talked to five people. Now, are you trying to sell insurance on the phone? No, you're calling them with the intention of booking an appointment. This is simple stuff. This is not rocket science. But guess what? If you start your day and it's 10.30 and you haven't made calls yet and you go into your 11.30, you do a carry back, your one o'clock reschedules, you're walking around, you're driving home at 2.30, you haven't talked to five people yet and you went another day and you haven't spoken to anybody, you are losing the game. You will never be a one percenter. Never. Never be a one percenter because you got to do the work. The third part of doing the work is you got to be personally recruiting. How many personal recruits do you need to do per year? 25 minimum. Yeah, I said a year, not a month. Can you believe that? 25 in a year? There's 440 million people in North America right now. People are dying for an opportunity. 175,000 people have moved to Calgary year to date. We're at 1.7 million people in Calgary, and you have to, you have to, you have to get 25 people onboarded. <laughs> Somebody stop me if I'm being unrealistic here. Somebody slap me around. But if you're doing paperwork at 11.15 a.m., is that ever going to happen? No. If you just go here, home, here, home, here, home, is that going to happen? No. If you count adding a name from Instagram to your prospect list, is it going to happen? No, because you've got to do the work. Okay, the fourth part is personal field training. Personal field training. You've got to be personally field training people. Personally field training people. Personally field training people. Why are you letting the best people on your team be trained by people that are making less money than you? You train your best people. I train, I reach down and I start training my best people when they're ready to be trained. Why would I leave my best person in the hands of somebody, an associate, making no money to get trained? Does that make any sense? Who should be training the best people? The best agent. Do you want your best person trained by the guy making 100,000 a year or no money per year? Now, does it mean that some part-time people that are up and coming shouldn't be involved in training? No, of course they should be. But it means that you as the six-figure earner or 50K earner or soon-to-be six-figure, Trey's about to cross 100,000, should have his hand in all the meetings, right? It means that if, 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 if Chris has a couple new people that are starting to be independent, 
He's got to have his hand in. He's got to be hopping on the call. He's got to be helping close. He's got to help build the plans. I haven't had any of my best people ever get trained by anybody other than me. Does that mean I'm doing everything? No. Is my hand in everything? Hell yeah, it is. My hand's in everything. I got my hand in everything. My hands are in everything. Why? Because I want to be a one percenter. I'm not a control freak. My hands are in everything. Who decides who gets to train who? The SMD, the SMD decides. It's my base shop. When you go SMD, it's your base shop. Who calls the shots? The SMD does. Whose name's on the, on the, whose name's on the lease? The SMD. Who's responsible when someone quits to pay their debt? The SMD. Who signs off on supervision? The SMD. I, I meet for two hours a week with my assistant just to sign off on super. I'm supervising 32 people right now in my base shop. Steve, I'm so busy. I just I have so much going on in my, in my business right now. I don't have time to make calls. I'm at two directs for the month, and I have time to make calls. I'm going to hit four directs this month because I want to lead by example. And the last part is you've got to frontline leadership develop. You've got to build frontline leaders. Right? You want to build frontline leaders. If you, are, if you own a door-knocking company, you want more people knocking doors. If you want to build a franchise, you need more people that purchase the franchise. If you want to build churches, you need more pastors to pastor the churches. Yes or yes? Yeah. You've got to build frontline leaders. Even Jesus Christ found 12 frontline leaders, his disciples. Yeah. And look what came from that. Everybody who built anything worthwhile has built a strong frontline leadership group. And I've only promoted 16 frontline SMDs. And we're fixing to be at 50 here in the next 36 months. And then after that, our goal is 100. Our goal in the next four years is to have 100 frontline senior brokers. But am I going to do that on less than 25 directs a year? No. Am I going to do that by doing paperwork at 10.05 a.m.? No. You can hire someone to pay them to do all that stuff. Hey, is this stuff online making sense, you guys? If you're on Zoom, <clears throat> send me something. Give me something. Hey, is somebody asleep there? Somebody's, I'm just kidding. Can you imagine if somebody fell asleep on camera? <laughs> what it would happen? We'd put them on the big screen. Lol, Drizzy. Tape those eyelids open. <clears throat> All right. All right, my third point. Okay, so number one was strong hours of operation, putting the work. Number three is this. You got to spend time building relationships with your people. I appreciate that compliment, Nabby. And it's true, where we go, we get, we get so much recognition, everybody wants to come up, everybody wants to say hi, because I spend time building relationships. Building relationships for me with my team is the most important thing. My wife and I, our, our, our house is open 24 seven. It's a constant revolving door of teammates. We're always having teammates over. How many teammates have we had over this year? <clears throat> hundreds, hundreds. See, leaders open their door for their team. There's no personal time in leadership because personal is family is business. Personal is family is business. My door is always open. I'm constantly building relationships. Trapper is constantly building relationships. That's why he's one of the next big SMDs. He's really good at that. Okay, but you got to be building relationships. Build people up, right? Get in the trenches. Guess where you build really strong relationships with people? By training them. By training them. You get on a meeting, Trey gets on a call, pops open the Zoom, he's really good at this. He, co he talks before, right, he debriefs after, he's meeting with them, getting together with them, having them over for barbecues, building relationships with your team is, is mandatory to be one percenter. It's not mandatory to be a top 10 percenter. You can be a top 10 percenter, not do that, you will just won't have a lot of people on your team win. And you can be a top 10 percenter without a lot of people winning. I'm talking about being a one percenter. You want to be a one percenter, you got to build an agency here. All right, fired up. Number four, you got to be 100% aligned with your leadership. You got, to remove, you got to remove the word why from your vocabulary. It's okay to ask about things if you're coming from a good place, but you got to be 100% aligned because, because your friction is slowing you down. You're, if you're doing things differently than your leadership, Right? If you're running it different than your SMD, if you're not following what they're, what, they're, what they're coaching you on, there's somebody above you that's making six to seven figures a year. There's somebody above you doing 25 directs a year. There's somebody above you qualifying for all the trips. There's somebody above you, and we got we some of the best SMDs in the whole company. Right? Are you doing exactly what your SMD is telling you to do? Are you doing exactly what your trainer is telling you to do? All the trainers in this room do exactly what I do. They don't vary at all. If they, if they do vary, 
They need to get back on because they're not getting results. But they all, from what I see, they're all doing what we're doing. We're all aligned. But are you 100% aligned with your leadership? As soon as you start saying things like, well, here's how I do it, you're not aligned. You're not aligned. Here's how I do it. I do things differently. I'm in a different this. I do things di Why not just be aligned? Why not just let it go? Why not just submit to the system? It's like, I want to buy McDonald's, but I want to sell hot dogs. Hey, home office, uh, I'm just wondering if we could get like a hot dog on here, right? I'm, I'm from Milwaukee, and we like to eat hot dogs in Milwaukee. I'm just guessing. I don't know if Milwaukeeans, no offense, right? We want to eat hot dogs. They're going to be like, LOL, no way, you shouldn't have bought a McDonald's. This is it. You guys came here because you bought the system, Cam. You came here to, if you want to run a boutique financial services company, you joined the wrong company. If you want to build, if you want to build something on the train tracks, you got to be aligned. Number, number five, you got to run a mid-market volume business. Mid-market volume business. There's too many people chasing business owners right now for corporate deals. Like, what are you doing? I mean, if you're making 150, two, three, 400 grand a year, yeah, go get some corpse. Most people chasing corpse are making no money here. I read up more corp deals than the average person because just through volume, the volume mid-market people have a corp. Like Trey Nash prospected somebody the other day. They make a couple hundred grand a year. They wrote their sale, 20,000 point sale. Gonna recruit them into the business. Six figure earners coming in the business. Oh, and by the way, they have a corp. So let's do your corp. That makes sense? Yeah. He didn't approach him about, hey, can I talk to you about corporate life insurance? <laughs> are you running a boutique steakhouse? You're running a mid-market McDonald's franchise. Why are you so embarrassed about your McDonald's franchise? If it was like, oh, I'm so, yeah, I just, oh, I just want to, I just want to go after business owners that are easier to deal with. No, you want to be lazy and lack discipline and you're doing paperwork at 10, 15 in the morning. True or true? true. Run a mid-market Sales funnel business. I don't want to chase wealthy people. I don't want to knock on, can you imagine me 43 years old knocking on businesses, trying to get like a, trying to go in the back door. You know how many people approach business owners for that stuff? Even when people want me to do their business stuff, you know what I say? Hey, Trey, why don't we sit down on the personal side first? We'll see if you're a fit there. And if I can help you on the personal side, we'll talk to you about your business. I don't want you as a corporate client if I can't get your personal life insurance. Yes or yes? So you got to choose. Are you going to chase businesses? Are you going to chase mid-market volume? And guess what mid-market volume leads to? High net worth clients, corporate deals, all that stuff. You got to be smart with your time. And I'm just fired up right now. I'm not yelling at you. I'm fired up, right? I'm with you. I'm with you because I'm fired up. And I've made these mistakes too. I've made these mistakes too, okay? I got a couple minutes left. My last point is this. You got to be willing to work whenever and however. Don't be so quick to, to day block to say, I don't work this day. This is brought up at the event. People making 30, 40, 50, 80, 90 grand a year saying, I don't work Saturdays. I don't work Sundays. Uh, you don't have to work every day, but you should be willing to. Yes or yes? yes? If you're halfway through the month and you've made two grand and your bills are 10, what should you do? Work, work. work Sunday. I, I just don't understand. I don't work this day. I don't, I, I don't get it. Do I work every Sunday? No but I worked every Sunday till 500 grand a year, every single one. I did an average of four to five units every Sunday till 500K a year. Does that mean you should too? I'm not saying that. But if you're not hitting your goals and you're saying I don't work Sundays and you're at zero and zero, maybe you gotta do some meetings on the weekend. Does that make sense? Yeah, exactly. Just don't be so quick to say I do and I don't, I do and I don't, I do and I don't. I, other than my wife and God, guess who I report to? My bank account. I report to my bank account. My bank account is my boss. I'm my bank account's bitch. <laughs> and if that thing's not full and it's not growing and I'm not paying off debt and buying homes and saving two grand a month for my kids and all the goals and going to Hawaii every year and going to Africa and going to Mexico and saving 15, 20,000 a month in cash, whatever, the, whatever your goals are, whatever yours are, if I'm not doing that stuff, guess what I'm doing? I'm working harder. I'm getting it done. This is not, if you want to be a 10 percenter, don't worry about it. I don't work Fridays. I don't work Sundays. That's fine. You can be a really good self-employed person. 
but I'm willing to do whatever it takes for as long as it takes. Whatever it takes, ethically and morally. I'm not going to forget about my family. I'm not going to forget about my kids. But am I effective at home if I'm stressed out financially? No. Have you ever been stressed out financially at home? You're not present as a father. You're not present as a husband. You go take a couple of days off of the lake. All you're thinking about is your bills. Bouncing checks, credit cards, tech fees can't make it. All this stuff is stress, stress, stress. But I got my time. I got just my me time. So here's a suggestion. If you want your me time, and it's important, and it should be important, by the way. I don't work all the time. Here's a suggestion. Max out your first five and a half days a week. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If you go to work, if you go to work and do the work and show up and aren't doing paperwork at 10.05 and you're prospecting 25 people a week and you're getting your two direction 10,000 points, man, Sundays are like, woo, like fiestas. <laughs> Slippers, right? You got, your, you got your house coat on all day, right? You're fired up. And then when you're on a run, you're working maybe six days a week, seven days a week. Man, if I was in debt, if I was like 10, 20, 30 grand in debt, or I really wanted to get to the next level, I, I don't know if I would take day off. Probably not. Am I going to take time block? Yeah. Am I going to take half a day here, half a day there? Yeah. If my wife wants to go away or have some alone time, am I going to take it off? 100%. But if you're not making enough money, be, don't be so quick to decide what you are and aren't willing to do. Yes or yes? yes. Right? All right. So I'm going to wrap up on this. Okay? I'm going to wrap up on this. If you want to be a one percenter, you're going, to have to, you're going to have to think differently than you think right now. You can't keep doing what you're doing and expect to be a one percenter. Everybody at the sound of my voice has to level up to be a one percenter. You just have to level up. So take one or two things that I talked about today. Focus on getting better at them. Don't take the message the wrong way. Please don't go home and tell your wife, oh, I, I got to work every day. It's not what I said. You don't have to work every day. You, don't, you do you. But you got to go and you got to get the results. Five, five and a half days a week should be way enough time to make 10, 15 grand a month. Recruit three, four, five directs a month. That's more than enough time. But if you can't get it done in five and a half, there's probably something seriously wrong and you're going to resent the time you take off. It's not even going to be fun. Get to the end of the month, you made like four grand, bills are 10, you're going to resent the whole thing, right? So I recommend getting it done, doing the work, having a plan, making it happen, and then you could do what the heck you want. You can do whatever the heck you want, but you're self-employed. You're an entrepreneur. You don't have a boss. You are your boss. And you got to do whatever it takes to get the job done. And uh, that's how you become a one percenter. Sound good? Yeah. Okay, guys. Thank you very much. Woo!